and I'm going to introduce the project. Um, I'm going to do that by looking at a different area, but we're going to do exactly the same analysis and create uh, the same product, just using a different area so that I'm not giving away too much. So this is the, the final result, so to speak. And what we want to produce at the end of this uh, final project is a map that looks something like this. Here we have our background map, uh, data provided by Landwetteriet, and we have these green polygons dotted around on this map. These illustrate locations where, according to the, the method I have used here, the algorithm I, I'm, I've applied here, the land is suitable uh, for construction of a new waste management site. The land is suitable uh, due to its physical characteristics, the soil type, the land, current land use as it is, the distance from uh, roads, from uh, buildings and built up areas. We have both positive and negative characteristics to, to consider there, as well as the area of land that is suitable being large enough to contain a waste management site. But the further criteria that that area has to all exist within one property, um, rather than being spread out over several properties, it's simply to ease the, the purchase of the land, so to speak. But let's not forget that all of this is somewhat artificial. It's a project that's been made up. It looks somewhat realistic. Uh, in another video, we can go through what uh, problems there might be with the analysis method. But right now, this is going. This is what you will perform but the location is slightly different. We are some, a few kilometers south of the area that you will be analyzing. This is Vatorva in uh, Upland. Uh, so this is a, the sort of thing that you will produce. So we can see we have the roads here and we have forests and fields. And these green areas are somewhat close to roads that we can, so we can access these areas. Um, and we can see that none of these are uh, located on fields, agricultural area, because we consider that to be valuable. We do not want to use agricultural land for something that isn't agriculture. We, that is a high value, a good use of that soil type, uh, as well as that land cover. Um, so we don't want to appropriate that for uh, some other use. Leave it as it is. We have lots of other land to use in Sweden, so we do not need to be using agricultural land for anything other than agriculture. So let's look at the project. This is the, the final uh, result. I have here the uh, map layout. This is where I've done all the, the laying out for the map. We don't want these, these other areas here, these dark areas that you can see in this. These are areas that are that fulfill all the physical characteristics so the, um, with the soil type, the land use and so on, but aren't large enough. I haven't put those into the final map uh, that you've seen because it, it's unnecessary, um, it, it's a mess then. It creates too much um, uh, excess uh, uh, information for the reader to, to, to um, interpret. So what data do we have to begin with? Let's just remove these. And this is the basic information. Here we have a map. This is the, the, the Fastihetskartum from the Landsmetteriet. So it's just a standard map uh, containing data on very rudimentary data on land use, roads, um, railways, and so on. And there are also property boundaries in this map. Um, we also have, so if I uh, turn these off, we have a soil map from the Geological Survey of Sweden, SGU. Um, we can see here different soil types. This information is used to extract where we have suitable uh, soils. Suitable is determined here to not be clays because we want to farm on clays and silver soils. We also want to uh, take into consideration surface runoff. Um, so we don't want soils that um, keep the water too near the surface, so they run off quickly. Because if we were to have some sort of spillage within the site, we don't want the water disappearing into a, um, a, a water channel and then further into rivers. We want it to, to be able to soak into the soil um, and not do too much damage where it is, uh, which sounds very much like a, a till, muram. Uh, also, this means that we are I'm going to use exposed bedrock, these red, if we expand those. Um, here we have our soil map. So we have uh, these red symbols are, are um, soil, this uh, urbari, 
as uh, its bedrock, um, where the again the surface water might be thought to run off rather too quickly for for our purposes. Neither do we want these sandy soils here, this green um, uh, map symbol, because this uh, is uh, esca material uh, and is considered to be uh, useful as it is. We don't want to pollute it. It's uh, a water source, so we so that we want to avoid those as well. Um, so essentially the, the constraint here is that we want to build on, on till. Uh, and then we are also, because of this uh, um, consideration with surface runoff, we want to avoid streams, but we also want to avoid those things that haven't been mapped as streams and ditches. We want So we need to do our own hydrological analysis of this uh, DEM, digital elevation model. Um, we do that analysis and then we avoid those streams. We buffer out from those streams and so and say, don't be too close to those streams. And all this is described in the instructions for this project. Um, so we need to do a stream analysis on this DEM, uh, which will result in something like this in this area. So we have these streams, which you can then buffer out um, to a certain distance according to the instructions to, uh, and then say that we do not want to build within these areas. What does all this mean? Well, let's let's um, turn this back on here so that we know where we are. Uh, if we look at this, I have created two uh, layer groups, and here we have the negatives. Uh, this you can see in, in another video over the area that you're going to work on, but this is simply those areas that we cannot build on for whichever reason. And we can see here that there are multiple reasons for not building here, but any of these reasons Whichever reason it is, it's good enough to exclude the land here. So these, this, all of this pink area consists of different uh, parts that are considered to be uh, not appropriate for building on. So if any of these is fulfilled, we don't want to build there, regardless of which one it is. It doesn't matter. As, long, as soon as one of those is fulfilled, we don't want to build there. When it comes to the positive, here we have the positive criteria. And it looks pretty good over a large part of the map, uh, except when you consider that all three of these have to be fulfilled. So we have to have the right land use as it is now, we have to have the right distance from a road, and we have to have the soil being uh, till. So all of these, these names contain information about how the layer was, uh, was created. Um, with the, the land use and the soil, they haven't been buffered, they are where they are. So that, that soil that is good is only at that location. We do not buffer out. Same with the land use, but with the roads, we have this buffer out to 150 meters because we want to be close to a road. So we find where the roads are, buffer out to 150 meters. Anywhere within that is good enough for us. So that's what we're going to do. And how do we use these? Um, we use a model in Model Builder like this. So with our negative um, criteria, those things that mean that the land is not useful. Wherever we are within 50 meters of a, a stream or when we're on a road, so this is this 10 meter road buffer, um, 300 meters from a large water body. We don't want to be that. That's too close, so we want to stay away from those. We don't want to be closer than 200 meters to an existing house. Uh, we don't want to disturb uh, anybody unnecessarily and not closer than 1,500 meters to a built up area, simply because we want to keep the noise away from a built up area and allow the built up area to potentially expand in the future. Uh, and similarly, we have uh, constraints from, from buildings. So we have all these ideas about why we can and can't uh, build in a particular area. And all of these are our negatives and the union of those. Uh, so union is, is sort of equivalent to the or statement. So if it's the, within 50 meters of a stream or uh, if it's on a road or if it's within 300 meters of water or it's within 200 meters of a house and so on, if any of those are fulfilled, that particular spot is not good. And then when we come down to here, the positive intersect is like and. So if the land use is um, uh, open area or coniferous woodland, yes. If it's also within 150 uh, meters of road, yes, that's good. And if the soil is till, if all three of those are fulfilled, so and so land use and road distance and soil type are fulfilled, that's good. 
So then we end up with our positive uh, criteria and our negative criteria in our model. We combine those with an arrays where, whereby we take the surface that is good to use, where, we, where, where it fulfills all three criteria and erase any areas that are negative that we don't want to build on. And that leaves us with this, um, <clears throat> with this area here called all the potential sites that fulfill those criteria. And that is equivalent to uh, essentially this all potential sites here. Now it's called single part uh, because a lot of these are um, contain objects that have multiple polygons as one object. If you remember, we, um, an object doesn't necessarily mean it's one point or one line or one polygon. It can consist of several of these. And in certain cases here, there are several polygons that are disjointed, not next to each other, that are called the same object. So we run the multi-part to single part, and each polygon then becomes its own object. And this is for uh, being able to find a, a polygon of the right size. So that then, that was um, this stage where we get to, to here. We do what I've just said, where we create um, a surface that is, uh, all, all these polygons that are all, all individual objects. Um, and then we go and then we take in the, the property map, not the lines. We want the, uh, the, the polygons that are, that describe each property not the property boundaries, but the area that is the property. And then we perform an intersect on that again. Uh, it's, that's why it's called intersect two, because we had an intersect down there. And that will tell us where both of these criteria are fulfilled. Uh, and then we can analyze that data to find which are large enough. And the larger, then, then once we have uh, these areas that are 10 hectares, we end up with a map that looks something like this. Um, we should actually just go back and turn that on and we can turn that off. Go back to our layout and we end up with our map like this. And we have a, a small legend here. The legend is difficult in this case because a lot of the, the information in this is the, the, the legend is available in another map. Uh, and having a, a, an excessively large legend, this is only a small A4 map. There's not a, exactly a, a huge amount of room to put in a full uh, explanation of all the symbols used here. So for the sake of convenience, just the, 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 only the surfaces, these land use surfaces have been um, put into this, into this legend, plus an indication of what these symbols are, these, the most important ones, telling us uh, where our potential sites are. There's a text here with a small explanation of what the criteria are that have been used to derive this. And then we have uh, the, the, the simple explanation of where the data come from and uh, a title. Plus we have coordinates around the sides and an north arrow and a scale bar down the bottom. So this is the product that you will be creating for a different area. So your map will not look exactly like this. It will not. And you will also have far fewer potential sites. The area chosen for your project uh, does not contain anywhere near as many sites uh, that are suitable. That's a much more constrained problem there.